This is why I don't have a portable telephone. I believe it is the citizen's duty to refuse to carry a tracking device. I'm sure they're convenient, but they're, some things are more important than convenience. And this is one of them. So, <clears throat> it's no coincidence that the world's major religions for thousands of years have explicitly promoted this spirit of goodwill. Because anything that can raise the level of this spirit even a little bit makes life better for everyone. Whether those religions have had any effect, I don't know. <clears throat> In any case, what does it mean when powerful social institutions say that it's wrong to help your neighbor? What are they doing? They're poisoning this vital resource something that no society can afford. No society has too much spirit of goodwill. We can't afford to throw it away. And what does it mean when they say that if you share with your neighbor, you're a pirate? What are they doing? They are trying to equate helping your neighbor with attacking ships. And nothing could be more wrong than that because helping your neighbor is admirable but attacking ships is very, very wrong. So they're not similar and we should refuse to use their propaganda term pirate. If someone else starts talking about piracy and asks me what I think about it, I say, I think it's very wrong to attack ships. I refuse to be drawn by other people into repeating the enemy's propaganda terms. And what does it mean when they impose harsh punishments like years in prison on people who share with their neighbors? How much fear will it take before your neighbors are too scared to help you? How much fear will it take before you are too scared to help them? If you don't want to live in a society permeated by this level of fear, you need to take action to put an end to the proprietary software developers terror campaign. I call it a terror campaign for a specific reason. In two countries, the proprietary software developers have threatened the public with rape for having unauthorized copies of proprietary software. And I think that threatening people with rape constitutes a terror campaign. So that's the reason for freedom number two, the freedom to help your neighbor, the freedom to make copies and distribute them to others when you wish. Freedom zero, the freedom to run the program as you wish for any purpose, is necessary for a different reason. So you can control your own computer and your own activities that you do with your computer. It may be surprising, but there are proprietary programs that even restrict the running of an authorized copy. They restrict <clears throat> who's allowed to use it, or how many people are allowed to use it, or what job it can be used for, and this is obviously not having control of your own computing. So Freedom Zero is essential, but it's not enough because freedom zero is only the freedom to do or not do whatever the developer already decided. To really have control of your computing, you need freedom number one, which is the freedom to study the source code of the program and then change it to do what you want. That way, you make the decision. 
instead of the developer imposing his decision on you. <clears throat> However, <clears throat> well, if you don't have the source code and thus you don't have freedom number one, then you can't even tell independently what the program is doing. And many non-free programs have malicious features. Features put in not to serve the user, but rather to spy on the user, restrict the user, or attack the user. For instance, spy features are quite common. One proprietary program that, ha that you might have heard of that spies on the user is called Windows XP. When the user of Windows, and I won't say you because you wouldn't use a program like this. When the user of Windows searches for a word in his files, Windows sends a message to Microsoft saying what word was searched for. And, oh that's one spy feature. And when Windows XP asks for an upgrade, it sends Microsoft a list of all the programs installed on the machine. That's another spy feature. <clears throat> now Microsoft did not tell us about these spy features. People had to find them. And it wasn't easy. For instance, the list of installed programs is sent in encrypted form which means you can't easily tell what the information is. People had to do some clever research to figure out what information was being sent. Mm. <laughs> is there any chance of finding me some hot tea? A large amount, like half a liter, <laughs> with milk but no lemon. Thank you. <laughs> Regular Pepsi will also work. Regular Pepsi will also work. But spy features are not limited to Windows. Windows Media Player also spies on the user. It does total surveillance. It reports everything that the user looks at. But please don't think that spying is something that only Microsoft would do. Microsoft is just one among many proprietary software developers and Basically, they're all doing the same evil thing, which is making proprietary software. And many of them take the power that this gives them and use it to mistreat people in other ways. For instance, RealPlayer also spies on the user in the same way. <coughs> what was that sound I just heard? No, I'm just wondering, was that the sound of windows? Oh, good, good. Oh, I don't mind if you use your computer, that's okay. So, <clears throat> RealPlayer also reports everything that the user looks at. And so does the TiVo. It reports everything that the user watches. Total surveillance. Now, the TiVo is an interesting case because the TiVo contains a lot of free software. In fact, it contains a small GNU slash Linux system. And many people in the free software community applauded the TiVo when it came out. They said, ah, they're using our software. How nice of them. <laughs> 